For most developers, building a SaaS is the pinnacle of coding. They want to develop their app, it generates millions of users, and they're rich as fuck. But sadly, most will never see this dream come true because they're either lazy, they don't have the right skills in coding, or they have the wrong product or the product is taking too long to develop. And I once did deal with all these issues. A young Nizzy many years ago had aspirations of building a SaaS, generating users, and making some money from his side hustles. But after countless hours of coding and many failures, I've been able to hone in my craft in SaaS building, even building an app in a week. And I found that it's a lot simpler to build an application than you might think. And so what I'm going to show you is how I built my learning platform SaaS. I'm going to walk you through every aspect with what framework or language that I used and why I used those language or frameworks. You can think of this as a guide or blueprint on how to actually build an application, something that I kind of wish I had when starting out. So that being said, let's get into it. And so the main product is a learning platform for developers. When I was learning code, I found it super boring to watch watch 10 hour tutorials, eight hour lectures on a specific subject. And I didn't learn that way. And I found that short chapters on a specific subject that included code snippets and GitHub repositories in each chapter would make development a lot simpler for the user and a lot easier for me to make. And with that in mind, the first aspect of the development process was building out the front end. And you can kind of think of the front end as whatever the user can actually see. This is the nav bar, the hero section of your landing page. And the main framework and language that I used for the front end is Next.js. I personally use Next.js because it's so easy to make applications with it. It's everything you need in one framework. And although it has its downsides, the client-side rendering and the server-side rendering just make development so much easier to manage and control the things that you can't really control on other frameworks. If I wanted a fast reload time on maybe the landing page where I'm not really grabbing user data, I could just call it as a client component. While if I'm fetching data and I need a little bit more time for the data to come, I'll just call the server-side rendering instead. And the main language we're using to write Next JS in is TypeScript. But Nizar, why do you just write JavaScript? TypeScript is better, okay? TypeScript is just way better. Don't even come at me with this JavaScript <laughs> stuff. And honestly, I'm using TypeScript because it's a more enjoyable experience. It's quite nice to have that type safety in there. Just in case you forget something, you can just automatically fix it right away. And in terms of the UI libraries and designs, I'm using Tailwind CSS and Daisy UI. Tailwind CSS already comes pre-installed in Next.js, so I just like to use it. And then I'm using Daisy UI as the UI library. And honestly, I found the front end a little bit annoying for this app. It was very abstract and I think in any other language or framework, I would have struggled a lot more than I would have with Next.js. Now, in terms of the backend, since Next.js is a full stack framework, we just use Next.js in the backend. Oh shit, here we go again. And honestly, no complaints here. Next.js makes it so easy to like manage all your APIs. For example, we had to be able to create a course, delete a course if we had to, creating a user for authentication and creating a payment instance for the specific user who paid so that we can associate the access to the course to the user, if that makes sense. And what made it even easier to use the APIs when talking to the database, which we'll get into soon, was an ORM. <laughs> But Nizar, why aren't you using Superbase or Firebase? It's faster. I like an ORM. I like a database. I personally enjoy more using a database than not. And look, is it faster to use cloud computing like Firebase? Absolutely, 100%. I'm not even arguing that. But just off personal preference and for what this app is, it doesn't really matter. And because we're using an ORM, that means that we're using a database. And I personally use a Postgres database and the performance wasn't too bad. Like there is some speed issues, especially with large quantities of data, but it's not really too noticeable. And the main thing I was using the database and ORM for was creating user accounts for the authentication, creating the payment instances, creating the courses and storing those courses and the videos associated with those courses. And authentication was the next part of our app. And luckily for us, we're so lucky as Next.js developers, we've got Next Auth or AuthJS as our auth manager. And especially if you're using OAuth, which I highly recommend you do, like Google Auth and GitHub Auth, it's a walk in a park. Like this is all the code I really had to write for OAuth. The user just clicks sign in, the user GitHub authentication, and they're a user. And the authentication is so important because the user can't buy a product if they're not logged in. And the one aspect that you're probably waiting for is the payment system. And for that, I use Stripe JS. I wanted it to be a one-time payment for the courses, and I plan on making like a lifetime access to the courses on the platform. And honestly, Stripe is just so annoying to implement even after like six months of using it. I always have some issue with deployment, webhook, or the checkout session, whatever it may be. There's always a damn problem with Stripe. Why is it? Fucking Christ! 
But again, since we have the authentication, we're able to easily create a payment session using the Stripe API and then creating a payment instance. And in terms of like a large scale view of what the learning platform looks like, we have the front end, which the user can see. We have the back end where we're creating features such as creating a user, storing a user, creating a payment instance, talking to the Stripe API. We can also include the ORM here. And so hopefully this video kind of clarified some things for you in terms of SaaS building. And if it did, please like and subscribe. It would honestly really go a long way. And if you want to join our Nizzy's community, then I will leave that that discord down below. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.